All right, we are back for another Confident Opinion. Please. I'm going to be here by myself today. There's not going to be any uh, intern uh, unless the gas show grimace. Maybe you're Friedman. I told Friedman about the show yesterday, so we'll see if he's around. Uh, McBride, of course, uh, sent out messages to everybody, letting them know what time the show was going to be on. Uh, today we're going to do basically the exact same thing as we've been doing uh, last two weeks. I told you this week I would have the uh, first of a two-part series, and that first part is uh, it's going to be on Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, it's not going to go too much into everything, but uh, just kind of like what I think about it. Uh, and then next week it's actually going to have another side of it. So the side's going to be more of a uh, um, from a differing opinion from uh, two different websites, two different uh, ideas on everything as it relates to that. Um, and just like I said last week, we've got a uh, how we're going to do this. We're going to start every week with the current events. So do what's new with you since the last time I was on. We're being on weekly. It's not too much, you know, different every week. So <clears throat> excuse me on that. Uh, so if you're listening to us on the internet, you're on RadioSherry.com, and you'd be listening on Google Chrome. That's the only way to actually hear it. Uh, strange enough, I didn't think I had a Google Chrome on either of the two laptops I have, but I actually use Google Chrome, and I have a Google Chrome uh, app on my phone, so I can listen to it on my phone on that. If you're not listening to us there, you'll be listening on the phone, and on the phone, the uh, phone number, if you're listening online and wanted to call in, it'd be 605-477-3037. You can just listen to it straight off the uh, phone there. If you wanted to actually call in, you would have to hit 5, and that will allow you to call in. Um, I know I was listening to the show last week, and I know when Grimace called in, it was a little bit, a uh, little bit raspy. I'm, I'm testing different volumes and things like that, and in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, when people call in, the volume that they're actually at. So again, it is a work in progress. Uh, I am uploading all of the shows that we do up to our YouTube page. You can just look up Consummate Opinion on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, all that stuff. The SoundCloud, I am actually only keeping two to three shows at a time on. Uh, I used to actually have one of those pay passes on there, and what I would do was uh, I would just upload, upload, upload. Well, when they ended up wanting to charge me about $150 to renew that, I decided it was time to move on. Never really thought about YouTube, but McBride and I spent literally hours. Uh, McBride probably more than me to get everything up on the uh, show in terms of the first 20 episodes, which we have the first 10, and then we have 20 through wherever we're at now. I think we're at 37. This will be number 38. So all that stuff is on the YouTube page. I'm in the process of doing 11 through 20. I have a feeling all of them will get copyrighted because I'm using a, a, the theme song that we used to use is a, part of a Skrillex song. It doesn't have any words. It is strictly audio, but I still have a feeling we'll get copyrighted. So I'm going to put that stuff up there, and uh, if it allows to play, it allows to play. If not, you know, it's not the end of the world. Those are shows that we did a year and a half ago, if not more. Uh also, you can follow Radio Sherry. You can follow them on Instagram, SoundCloud, or Facebook. I actually found the Facebook page after searching for, for quite a while, uh, searching for it. I, I couldn't find it. I, I finally did. Um, I'm going to start with a what's new with you. Um, everything since last week, let's see, we've gone to uh, a Tim McGraw concert at Jones Beach, which is uh, – Jones Beach is a great place to go. The only problem with it is when you get off the, the Long Island Railroad, the train that takes you there. Then you gotta you got to take a cab. And th- this is what the cab driver tried to pull with us. You know, I figured it would probably do a $10, $15 cab ride. But what they do is they charge per person. And normally that's not a big deal. But what makes that a big deal is the fact that there are three girls in front of us that get in this cab. The cab driver said $8 a person. That's great. So I'm thinking, all right, I guess that's going to be $20, $25. Well, the intern and I go, and we are – sitting there waiting for the cab, and the guy comes, he goes, oh, there's just two of you. I said, yeah. He goes, all right, $29. I'm like, for what? Twenty? There's two of us, so we're going to be more than the three. And I get supply and demand, less 
might actually end up being more. But in that situation, come on, $29? So I go to the next guy who pulls up how much. He goes $10 a piece. Boom, I'm going with that guy. If you're trying to make money, and, you know, we were trying to arrive, uh, we were going to be there about 20 minutes before the show started, 15 minutes before the show started. Now is the time to make your money. So if you're going to nickel and dime someone, and, yeah, it's not nickel and dime when it's $9, but, I mean, still, you, you're you're not allowing yourself to make any money. So we went that. It cost $20 to get there. Now, not using public transportation back in Florida. This whole cab thing still new to me, and I get tipping the 20, 25%, 15%, whatever you tip, depending on how much the actual, uh, the actual amount of the bill is. But I guess it'd be a fare, not a bill. And so I end up giving them $5, because I'm not sure if in that $10 that is tip included, and that's just the basic price. So, I mean, whatever, it costs 25 bucks. On the way out. When we leave the concert, great concert, good time. Billy Currington was good. Tim McGraw was good. And so we're sitting there. We're getting, we're, we're leaving. We go out to the first cab, sitting there. He goes, how many? I said, two. I want to say he said $25. And then I said, all right, well, what about to this other train station? You know, we could have taken either train station. Where Jones Beach is, it's kind of stuck between Freeport and I believe it's Wontaga. I think I'm saying that right. And it's kind of stuck in between those two. So I'm, I'm basically in this position where I can pick both. So I say, all right, 25 for that one. How much is the other one? 30 or 35? I forgot exactly what it said. I go, no thanks, never mind. I'll continue my day. So I went to another cab. Guy says $10 a piece. Going to the place that we actually had tickets for, so it was all good. So that's our experience so far with the Long Island Railroad and that. That was on Thursday. Then on Saturday, I uh, we, we ended up going to Monster Jam, uh, the monster truck show that they have, uh, you know, I guess it's worldwide, actually, looking at their website, but throughout the country. And uh, they had it at MetLife Stadium over in New Jersey. So we had to take a train there. I look on their website. The only event all year that doesn't involve the train is Monster Jam. And I get it. We're up in New York. Nobody's watching Monster Jam. Nobody's going to Monster Jam. But it was actually quite full. Uh, I, I think I put a picture of it. Uh, I put a picture of the stadium up on the uh, – Instagram, which I use now for the first time uh, in, use it twice now in the last week or so, uh, and for the first time in a month. But uh, um, we waited for the bus. It was five dollars a person each way, so much, much, much better than uh, the Long Island Railroad, then plus a taxi, because our round trip uh, transportation to and from uh, from the concert on Thursday was about eighty-five dollars. This was twenty bucks round trip, which was great. Um, Definitely a great place to go see a game, uh, great stadium, nice, brand new, probably five years old, something like that. We're going to be going to a uh, Giants game later in the year, me and some of the uh, other managers from work, with our significant others, of course, intern being one of them. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of what's new with me now. I wasn't going to save it for next week, but it happened before the show today, so I guess technically it be what's new with me. Um, as I said before, and I think I said this before, I'm, I'm renting my house out in Florida. Um, to one of Grimace's good friends, someone I, I knew years ago. And uh, anytime I see a text or a call or anything like that, you know, it, it always concerns me. One of two things. One, um, I am moving out, I'm not going to vote in rent. Two, something's wrong. Now, him and I talked uh, last week or something like that about, uh, uh, about I don't know, it was a couple weeks ago, two to three weeks ago, I guess now, about uh, him buying a house. I was like, hey, do you want to buy the house? So I saw the call today, and I was like, oh, maybe he's, you know, actually thought about it. Maybe he's actually putting a little bit more um, interest in it, things like that, because Grimace was saying last week how he actually is interested. And I saw the call, and he goes, hey, you know, what's going on? Sorry to bother you, this and that. Once you say sorry to bother you, in my eyes, sorry to bother you means, all right, I'm going to take up some of your time with something that you really don't want to hear. So I go, no, 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 what's up? What's going on? He, uh, uh, Scott informs me then that uh, the AC went out last night. Now, I own two different houses. Well, one was a house, one was a townhouse. And I've never had a, I guess, major appliance or major part of the house break down or have an issue until this. So he's going to take a look at it, him and his dad, and uh, see what's going on there. If I've got to make some calls and see uh, what I have to do to fix that problem, then I will. But uh, not really looking forward to that. That's uh, that's the end of that. Uh, what's new with me? Because, man, I was fucking pissed. Like, it was something that I wasn't expecting, um, always been prepared for. I do have some money saved in case something does happen in the house, but not 
something I was necessarily prepared for. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have you hold for just one second here. I'm gonna try to put the air on in here. It is absolutely steaming. Hold on one second. All right, so now we got the air in about 60. I would have to say it was probably about 85 at least in here before. So I got it on about uh, 60 now, so everything should be a little bit better. All right, so we're going to start with our current events. And this wasn't something that I planned on talking about today because obviously it just recently happened. I, uh, what I do is I try to have two to three shows worth of material um, as I'm going into a show, just so in case we're running a little bit short, running a little bit over, I can always add something to the next time. Um, intern said last week when she was here that uh, she's actually very impressed with the amount of uh, prep that I do. And, um, of course, the prep helps if you actually get to talk about everything and get to do everything. And actually, today I almost forgot my prep sheet, which isn't the end of the world because when we used to do the show from Florida, uh, I would never use a prep list or, or show notes or anything like that. I would just kind of wing it and have the website to go from there. But when you've got three or four people in a room, you've got the ability to have a little bit more ad lib, a little bit more, you know, ability to do stuff like that. But it's just one person or two, you know, depending on who calls in, like, you know, the ass called in, Grimace is called in. Um, it makes it a little bit, uh, with only one, it makes it a little bit more difficult to, to uh, build an ad lib because I can only talk to myself so much. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, Dusty Rhodes died. Um, Dusty Rhodes was a... Uh, a wrestler in, I mean, mainly in NWA, and then he was in WCW, WWE. Um, but his, both his sons uh, wrestle in WWE. One's name is Goldust, one is Dustin Reynolds, and then the other one is Cody. And he's known as Stardust now. Uh, very, very odd characters, both very, very strange guys. But like their dad, they were both able to work in the ring, talk, do stuff like that. Cody, actually, Cody Rose is a terrible talker. I shouldn't say that he's actually good. Uh, and he's pretty awful. But, uh, um, he died on June 11th in Orlando. Uh, WWE has a training uh, training grounds in Orlando, and uh, Dusty Rhodes worked there. Uh, he worked at the, it's called the Performance Center, and uh, I guess he had a fall at his house, and uh, complications from the fall actually led to his death. Um, his most famous, I mean, I don't want to say his most famous uh, thing that he ever did. I mean, he was a multiple time champion. Uh, he was a great talker, but was a promo he did called Hard Time. And um, that Hard Times uh, interview is actually on the web page I'm going to put up on our Facebook page. Uh, that is a uh, – it's actually pretty cool. It, it just kind of puts how – oh, and speaking of which, live on CNN, Jeb Bush is officially entering the presidential race. He wants to become the third President Bush. I'm not trying to watch live. Hold on. If this goes through. All right. Perfect. Um, he, he was a um, – like a very charismatic, I guess would be a good word for it. But that Hard Times interview was basically like, a, it was from the heart, uh, how many wrestling, all wrestling matches are scripted in one way, shape, or form. Uh, and majority of interviews are as well. But with this, he uh, he spoke from the heart. And they had a guy actually, um, uh, Dean Ambrose, the other night, uh, last night, I guess it would be, at the pay-per-view who actually had it uh, kind of off-script, I mean, it seemed off-script interview, where it was kind of like the new age hard times, how he said, you know, you, you're not never given anything, you got to take what you can get, um, you're never handed anything, you know, things like that. So um, he he kind of had an updated version of that. Now, uh, Dusty Rhodes' nickname was uh, the American Dream. Part of that was because he um, uh, he always claimed that he was the uh, son of a plumber, and how he came up from nothing to become something, hence the American dream. Uh, his real name was uh, Virgil Runnels. Uh, one of the things that he was most famous for was how, other than the Hard Times interview, was how often he bled and how much he bled. You want to talk profuse bleeding? This man profusely bled. It was times where, uh, I mean, they got away from it now in this whole PG style of wrestling and things like that now where there's no bleeding, there's no... Uh, swear words. There's no, you don't hit people in the head with chairs anymore in the days of concussions being as bad as they are and things like that. You just, they don't do that anymore. Well, if you take a look at pictures of Dusty Rhodes and some of the wrestlers back from those times, I mean, Ric Flair is the same way. Uh, more of a recent one that I know of, uh, New Jack, uh, Devon Dudley, these guys, if you look at their face, it almost looks like someone took a uh, piece of glass and just scrape it across something, leaving lines and indents and things like that. Like, it, it was a type of thing where I bet you if you flipped a pencil on his forehead, 
he would start bleeding. That's how intense his uh, his uh, forehead was uh, scarred up from all the bleeding. Now, a lot of people say, and of course wrestling is fake. I'm not going to be one of those people who sits there and, and tries to argue with the fact that, oh, wrestling is real. And and uh, when they when they get hurt, they, uh, they're they actually hurt. I can't believe they don't break their leg and stuff all the time. Wrestling is 100% real in the sense that they're athletes who are actually doing the stunts, doing what they're doing. Wrestling is fake in the sense that if they were actually punching each other in the face all the time, I mean, there'd be people dropping dead in every single match. And, well, maybe not every match, but every single event. You can only hit somebody so many times. Like if you look at UFC and some of the stuff they do, I mean, there's matches that are stopped out of the first 30 seconds. WWE obviously isn't like that in the sense that it's not the exact same thing. Um, it is very, very entertaining. Uh, the intern actually got into it, uh, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, we've been to one WrestleMania already. We went to New Orleans, and uh, we're going to end up going to hopefully this one upcoming in Dallas. I haven't requested time off, but I will be uh, requesting time off. Um, it's a very, uh, it's very fun to go to. Um, we don't get to watch it on TV anymore, uh, except for on the WWE Network, and WWE Network is is actually pretty cool. Uh, I didn't know as much as I've learned in the last about week uh, from about Dusty Rhodes than uh, I obviously know now. I shouldn't say week; it's only been about four or five days. But um, they got stuff back there, back to the '80s and '70s and things like that. So it's actually a, a cool way to learn about wrestling if you're if you don't already know. I'm also going to put up a uh, that one article, but then I also have a WWE's tribute to him that they played last night at. Uh, the uh, Money in the Bank pay-per-view, uh, and they're going to have another one, I guess, tonight on Monday Night Raw, but uh, I'm just going to put the one up from uh, last night. Next story, uh, this is uh, this is something that we used to always talk about on the show. I wish Big Friday was on for this one. Um, Florida toddler dies in hot cars. Mom teaches inside school. Now, every, every week to two weeks when we would do the show back in Florida, we would start every single episode with a child being left in a car. And it's not because we find that entertaining, because it's obviously not entertaining. It happens so often that it's, it's a news story that you can always find. It's, we're never going to find a shortage of that. I actually have two. One of them, uh, one of them led, was a fatality. The other one was not. Uh, this first one uh, was in the uh, Panama City area. Uh, it was actually in Panama City itself, I believe. And an 18-month-old girl has died after her mother inadvertently left her in the backseat of the car while she went inside to teach at a Panama City Elementary School. Now, I get having distractions. I get running late for work. I get, uh, man, let's see, forgetting forgetting a shirt you're supposed to bring, forgetting uh, paperwork you need for work, forgetting a book to school. I get all that type of stuff. But you have a child that is in the back seat of a car. How the hell do you forget that? And after, you know, years now of doing this show, it's been two years it still never ceases to amaze us that this stuff happens in the frequency that it happens. Um, lady's name was uh, Jamie Buckley. Uh, she didn't discover her daughter uh, until the end of the school day. Uh, the car was parked there since 7.30 a.m. So you figure in Florida, I don't care what day it is, uh, in a car, uh, the temperature said it was about 83 that day. So you figure inside a car, you're probably looking at at least 15 degrees warmer. Uh, it was definitely much warmer than it was in this room when I got in here. Uh, but um, if something like that is it's inexcusable, in a sense. Uh, there, there, there's no reason that anything like that should ever happen. But it continues to happen, so as long as it continues to happen, we will continue talking about it. Uh, let's see, the next one I got here is, Mom left kids in car while she worked at a bar. Now, I know that sounds bad, and you, when, you, when you think of a bar, I think of some of the places that we go to here, and it's not a... I've actually never been there, so I don't want to say it. It's in Trinity. It's in an uh, area very close to where we used to live in Florida. Um, strange how both these stories are from Florida, um, which actually something I want to talk about before I finish this. We've, we've said different stories and things like that. We look up different uh, – we try to find stuff on credible news sources, uh, New York Times, Daily News. Uh, this is from Day News 9. We get stuff from uh, WFLA in Tampa, uh, WTSP in Tampa, uh, we've had New York Post stuff, New York Times, like I said, uh, um, Huffington Post, things like that. You know, every once in a while, and we use smoking gun a lot. Smoking gun actually is relatively legit. You can uh, find all their different uh, police records and things like that on there. But uh, 
we're going to say some stories off this website called moron.com. Moron.com does have some truth, and then it also has a lot that's fabricated. Like um, we talked about the story about the guy with his imaginary friend. He killed his imaginary friend. Like you actually go online and looked into it a little bit after. Um, and that story is not 100% true. The guy who got arrested actually was arrested, but it wasn't at the time that he had it, that, or at the time that that story came out. Uh, he does have a different name. I forgot his name offhand, but uh, moron.com um, has good stories of morons, but have them put it out, you know, for other things. Um, the So we're going to have, I think, a story today, maybe one next week as well off moron.com. So anything that I say is from that, let's take it half true because it may or may not be true. And, and if I look into it more after the show and I find out that it's not true, of course, I will let you know. But back to this mom who left her uh, kids in the car while she worked at a bar. She worked at a place called Brass Tap. That is in Trinity, which is uh, essentially in Newport, Ritchie, Florida. Um, yeah, a 29-year-old mother named Tara Greenfield um, got arrested for child neglect after leaving her two children in the car. She went to work. Now, it's set at 5.51, so we have a clock in time. And about two hours later, the deputy showed up with the children in the car unattended. Now, there's two things about that situation. It wasn't her getting off. There was an anonymous uh, bystander, good Samaritan, if you will, who, who saw those kids in the car, which, I mean, that's, that's a great thing. That's wonderful. Now, not trying to say that she did the right thing because obviously leaving kids in the car can lead to terrible things like we just talked about, but she left the car running. Now, I'm a manager at a restaurant. Based on the situation and who I have to try to, who wants to call out and who wants to, uh, and what the reasoning behind it is, you know, sometimes I use a little bit more discretion and uh, I, I have a heart at times. And not saying I don't always have a heart because I do, but in times of someone calls and tells me, you know, I have a family member in the hospital, I have to go out of town, I have a family member here, I have to do this. You know what? I'm going to take that and I'm going to believe them. If you can't believe the people you work with or people in general, then you have a bad outlook on people and things like that. Like, I'm in the old understanding, like, Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestling years ago, don't trust anybody, you know, you can't trust anyone you speak to. Um... If I know I have been lied to actually at about uh, about two weeks ago, uh, I actually got lied to at work. Uh, I had someone who um, who said that their house burned down. Uh, after discussing it and finding out on social media, social media is a wonderful thing and and, and a curse. Social media is great for getting a hold of people, seeing people that you've met, uh, doing things like that. But then again, if you're doing something. I don't want to say illegal, but doing something wrong or doing something that uh, you're not supposed to be doing, and somebody catches you via social media, that is a curse because you you now don't have any bearing to stand on. You're posting pictures. You're doing this. Like Instagram happened to be this. So it went from a person whose house was burning down in Queens, I believe Queens, to partying it up at Harris Pool in Atlantic City at the same time when you're supposed to be at work that's a little bit much. Like in a situation like that, how do you end up believing that person ever again? And I don't think that's something that we're actually going to have to work with for that worker. Uh, I don't, I think that pretty much did her in. But uh, in the same sense, uh, it, it, it's hard to trust people. So if, if, let's say, her excuse, this lady's excuse for leaving her kids in the car, I didn't have a sitter, I didn't have something like that, you know what? Call in to work. If that company fires you for something like that, I mean, technically, in the, the day and age we're at with the uh, lawsuits and uh, everyone's suit friendly and it's just, it's a mess, actually, then you might you might have something. It could be, uh, and I don't want to say discrimination, but it could be something that you might have a leg to stand on. If you take your kids in the car when you go to work, you get arrested for something. Now we're in a lot bigger of a situation. You get arrested, now you don't show up to your shifts. Guess what? you lose your job. Why put your children in danger? The ages of these kids, you see here, they were one in seven years old. And to top it off, to even mom of the year here, um, what's their name? Tara Greenfield. I'm not sure if I said that already, but Tara Greenfield. Uh, mom of the year, they were oxycodone pills found by the one-year-old. 
and a glass pipe with cocaine residue also found in the car. Now, um, the pills, and here's another issue. you got those oxycodone pills sitting next to the one-year-old. They were, it was an open container, pills out by the one-year-old. One-year-olds don't know the difference between eating something and not, something that's good, something that's bad. They take stuff, they put it in their mouth. Had that child taken one, if not even more, we could be dealing with another fatality here, but from a whole different angle, not because it's a hot car, but because there's an idiotic parent. Um, it's, see if I can message show here, and he'd really appreciate this, being a father of two. I just, I just don't understand people. There's some people that just shouldn't have kids, and, you know, it may not start out like this. You may not know this right away, but, but it ends up turning into this, and that actually leads perfect into the next uh, event we got here. Lady with 51 IQ unfit to stay in trial. Now, here's what I don't get. If you do something wrong, now, there, of course, there are situations to where there should be, I guess, leniency and things like that based off of uh, mental illness and, and those type of things. But lady with a 51 IQ and fit to stay in trial. Now, had she stolen something from the store? Had she, I don't know, even stole some music or something off the Internet? and got in trouble for it. You know what? Not a big deal. We're talking about someone with an IQ of 51. What are you stealing? Snickers, stuff like that from the store? Come on. What she did was, I'm going to say the the second word first. The second word of the next statement I'm going to have is newborn. Now, 51 IQ and newborn are like oxymorons. In my opinion, in my opinion only, I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. I don't know if those two things should exist. A person with a 51 IQ and a newborn. So here's, here's what happened. The lady left her newborn in a, in a trash can to die um, two days after birth. Now, the baby did survive. There was uh, somebody that went by, heard some um, whining, squealing, things like that. Of course, there was no food or, or you know, any type of nutrition left for the child. Um, obviously, the child was not even, you know, she was like a week old or something like that. Um, so you're not going to be able to, you know, feed yourself or get anything to drink as it is. But she, so, okay, her name's Alicia Eng, Englert. I don't want to make sure I say that right. Alicia Englert. She's 23. She gave birth on August 24th. So this is August 24th of last year. So what we're getting here is kind of the after effects of that because um, she's standing in trial now. It's been about six months. Um, so Alicia Engler, 23, gave birth on August 24th, left the baby girl alone in the bathroom without food or medical care while she went to work. Okay, there's problem number one. That's August 24th, the date of birth. August 26th, she hid her under bags in a neighbor's trash can, but the neighbor heard noises and the newborn girl was rushed to the hospital. So the neighbors, in the sense, the Good Samaritan, like we had in the last story about the kids in the car. Um, court evaluations have found that Angler has an IQ of 51 is considered mentally disabled. I get it. I mean, that makes sense, obviously. Now, I guess every state law is different, and, of course, this is something that I can look, look into for another show. But um, Utah law, and this, this is in Utah, Utah law says that a defendant must have an IQ of 70 to stand trial. So because she was below that minimum, she is technically not allowed to stay in trial. So what she has to do is she has to enter a treatment program. And then um, this month, actually, she gets reevaluated. So once, once I find out the, um, the actual results of the, uh, the eval, I will, uh, I will let you know. Um, now, here, here's the problem. Angler maintained a dating profile throughout her pregnancy. So during her pregnancy, obviously she was pregnant because that would make sense during her pregnancy, but she maintained a profile online. Now, I'm very good with the Internet. I'm very good with computers. I'm very good with things like that. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of stuff like that that I don't know how to do, and I have well above a 51 IQ. I'm going to take a test, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know exactly what it is. But uh, um, if you're 51 and you can maintain an online dating profile, there's something going on in that brain. You are smart enough, and not that it takes intelligence to, to, to get pregnant, to have any, to have a family, to, to reproduce. It doesn't take intelligence. In turn, says I'm not intelligent all the time. Um, but 
it takes something. It takes something that's going on in your head. Now, in this sense, if she is unfit to stay in trial, or if she's fit to stay in trial, she should be fit to be able to do other simple things. And, you know, controlling an online dating website is probably one of them. Um, not only did she have that, but there's pictures online of her uh, of her hanging out at the club, drinking, dancing, having a good time. She could put together all these little pieces, but is apparently unable to stay on trial. Me, personally, I think it's ridiculous. I think she knew what she was doing because she did it twice. You don't just leave a child unattended day of being born and then two days later leave a child in a trash can. You know, I might cut her a little tiny bit of slack if she left the child in the same place that, that on day two, day three, whatever it was, and came back. But you left it in a trash can. That is a conscious decision to do something that's stupid. And for that person to not be able to stand trial, I think is absolutely ludicrous. Um, let me see here. On the website, you're going to get pictures of her, pictures of her club and things like that. Now, the one thing it doesn't show um, the pictures are dated just months before the child was born. So in my estimation, I'm assuming she is pregnant while she's drinking, dancing at the club, having a good time, you know, all that type of stuff. So uh, just assume that she was also technically injuring the child while she was doing this. On to the next one here. Uh, this is a very, very strange one. Uh, I've actually heard about it on another website than the one I'm going to quote on here. And it was not moron.com. Um, it was on the racket report. That's what I'm quoting off of. 76-year-old woman kicked out of KFC for breastfeeding 42-year-old son. Now, let me tell you something. This, this is a story I wanted to lead off with. But the reason I, I changed it, Dusty Rhodes died, you know, to me that's a little bit more important than a 76-year-old breastfeeding. But when I first heard about the story, I go, you know, as a, as a child I was lactose intolerant. I mean, I still am to a certain extent. But many different types of milk, soy milk, almond milk, goat milk, you know, and then you break down your regular milk, uh, whole milk, vitamin D, C, 2%, all that other stuff. And of course, there's powdered milk. I'm thinking that there's nothing but powdered milk going on in this situation. I can't imagine that there's anything but powdered milk in a 76-year-old woman who's breastfeeding. Powdered milk. So they had to have a standby water, I'm assuming, to make this work. But apparently, according to this article, let me see what what state this was to. I think it was Kentucky. I mean, that would make sense with the KFC, or I mean, no pun intended on the KFC in Kentucky, but uh, I'm trying to find it here, and I'm not seeing it. I can get back to you on that one as well. Um, that doesn't say, and that's unfortunate. You should see the picture of these two. These two are a mess. Um, all right, so 70 year old woman has created much controversy last week by breastfeeding her 42-year-old son in the middle of a KFC restaurant. Um, many customers in the restaurant complained about the incident management. Finally, her, her name was Linda, and her son was name was Michael, so we'll just use Linda and Michael. Uh, they were both escorted out by restaurant management. Now, according to the article, it says that he fed for about 15 minutes, which is even more questionable to me. Like, being a restaurant manager, if someone told me something like that was happening, I'm going to post the... Um, a website also up on the Facebook page after this about how beautiful breastfeeding can be, and obviously their, I don't want to say their Photoshop, but their, their studio quality pictures uh, that are going to be put up here, but it shows how breastfeeding can be good and how people are calling in question, you know, why do you breastfeed in public and things like that. There's a difference. If, I, if I'm out and I see a, well, I'll say one-year-old, but under one, above one, whatever, breastfeeding, you know what? That's the way it was. Neither one of my kids breastfed. I wasn't breastfed. My sister wasn't breastfed, you know, whatever. It is, I mean, that, that isn't even part of the, uh, the discussion. If you see someone, that's, you know, a grown-ass man breastfeeding, that's a problem. Like, there, there, there's nothing acceptable or right about that. I know it's like a fetish thing for some people, like the whole, you know, in, like in some type of dominions, but it's not, uh, not in mine. I'm not interested in that type of stuff. Um, she said that uh, she's, she's appalled by people having a problem here, that she has the right as a mother to breastfeed her own son. I get it. She, she has the right. That doesn't mean that she should. Um, neither mother, Linda, or Michael's son are allowed in that establishment again. They have been uh, kicked out for life um, due to their disgusting events as humans. Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to post, along with all the other stuff we're talking about here, a website. If 
called Art Fido. Um, and it basically says how this photo series highlights the beauty of breastfeeding and how to be eloquent. Uh, that's going to be another one I got there. Now, this one here, this next story is off of moron.com, so I'm going to take it for uh, for what it's worth. Actually, the next two are off moron.com, next two. Um, the, the woman arrested for biting off pit bull's testicles. Now, I was talking to somebody at work about this, and they had actually heard about this story, so I, I don't think it's actually something that's brand new. Um, it's not something that I don't think is made up, and if it is, they found it on a different website, and so it if not, we've got a couple websites uh, falsely quoting, which is fine. I mean, it happens every day. I falsely quote stuff on, at times at work just to get a point across. And guess what? It gets the point gets across. Uh, so his name is Audrey Ranch, 62. Apparently, she bit off her son's son's pit bull's testicles. The dog's name, I believe, was Pedro. Not that that matters in this situation. Pedro is now probably Paula uh, due to the loss of his testicles. But uh, um, the reason she bit it off is because her son ate all the meat at dinner. And uh, she wasn't too happy about that. That's the only thing that makes me makes me think, hey, this might not be a true story. Because if you're going to bite off a dog's testicle over me, I mean, at what point in your life are you at to where that something like that actually happens? And, I mean, it seems to be a little bit of a problem to me. Uh, after realizing that the uh, police had been called, which I don't know why they wouldn't have been, uh, she went and hid in a hole in the ground. They had a hole, and... Uh, um, she actually went to hide in that hole. And she did not fight the cops once the, uh, the police showed. But um, wait till you see this lady's picture. That's another one of those things. Like you, you, you can actually Google image. I, I learned that off of Catfish, uh, the TV show, that you can actually Google image um, pictures, put them online, see where they came from, see what websites they're at. But uh, um, it, the uh, dog underwent actually emergency surgery and is expected to make a full recovery, which that's great. If you're not that dog, like if you're that dog, then regardless of emergency surgery or not, you were given the gift of not being fixed, and that got fixed for you, if you will. Let's see, next one here. A woman wants to get sex change. Oh, I'm sorry, let me repeat that. This is going to lead perfect into uh, the Caitlyn Jenner part one that I'm going to talk about here after our local story. A uh, woman wants husband to get sex change because she now likes women. Again, this is off moron.com. I can't quote how accurate this is, but it's going to be in good humor if it's not. A uh, woman wants husband to get sex changed because she likes women. Um, they have been married for 32 years, and last year confessed to her husband that she is now a lesbian. Of course, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just going based off the story. Now, this is out of Oregon. A lot of the stories that I've noticed that are, uh, aren't accurate on moron.com relate to Florida. Like, people really bury Florida all the time. And I get it. I live there. and There are some messes, but there are messes everywhere. Like, coming here to New York, walk down the street, there's people that are ten times worse. Like, we had a guy out in front of our restaurant last night um, masturbating in front of people walking down the street. When when cops end up coming, he goes to hide underneath the van. And then his reasoning for doing it, he went to the New York Liberty game and lost $200. Two things on that, and then I'll get back to this lady. The first problem you mentioned was the Liberty game. Second problem, lost $200. I like gambling. I like it a lot. I like playing blackjack. I like playing craps. I like betting on sports. It's actually a lot of fun. I, I get enjoyment out of it. Do I have to do it all the time? No. The last thing I'm ever going to do, I don't think I bet on basketball. It is. Basketball is relatively difficult. Anything can happen. But I'm not betting on the New York Liberty. I'm not betting on the WNBA. I mean, I'll, 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 I've been on football and baseball, you know, maybe basketball playoff time like rain right now. No Liberty third game of the season type betting. It's not going to happen. Uh, but back to this story. So it's uh, Joe and Melinda Strong have been happily married for 32 years. Now, according to Melinda, I wasn't always a lesbian. I just sort of became slowly attracted to other women. I think the change possibly started when I began looking at girl-on-girl websites. I got exposed to some stuff. That's something we talked about last year, or last year, last week, um, in relation to the, uh, the porn hub uh, viewership and things like that, about how um, the age group, there's actually more women than men at certain age groups, and I believe her age group and her in her 60s actually kind of matches up with that. Um, she, now they, they were married in the Catholic Church, and in this sense, you know, being Catholic, I know in Catholicism, one of the worst possible things you could do is get a divorce once you're married. Um, so what she's trying to do is find a way around that divorce. 
she would like a sex reassessment for her husband rather than divorce. Now, in my experience with myself, that's not going to happen. You know what? I used to go to church. I was baptized um, in a uh, Presbyterian church, I believe. I went to a Baptist middle school. Um, regardless what rules, and I get it, you, I would think that divorce is a lot better option than changing your sexual who you are, in my opinion. That's just me, but, of course, everybody's not going to feel like that, but uh, in my sense, it is. Um, the husband is uh, still thinking on it. As he said, he would do anything for his wife. Um, he said he would go to Timbuktu and back. And this is just a, simply a chance to prove the length that he'll go for his wife to make her happy. I mean, I, if the intern mentioned something like that to me, I'd be a tiny, tiny bit bothered, just a little bit. Now, our last little uh, story before we get to the uh, the Caitlyn Jenner portion that I'm going to do today and then uh, connect with uh, part two next week. Um, I got on a website, and it's not just for New York, but I broke it down just for New York. Uh, and then I'm going to mention, uh, of course, you can check out the website on Facebook when I post it. That uh, It talks about many different places everywhere. Um, it's about the hourly wage that a renter needs to make to have a two-bedroom place. Um, the most expensive is Hawaii. Strange. I mean, you're on an island. Everything's going to cost more money. Uh, of course, here in Manhattan, we're on an island, but we have accessibility everywhere. Why is in the middle of the ocean? Um, for New York right now, to afford a two-bedroom place, and this, this doesn't mean that you can't do it if you make less. It just means that what it would realistically take and in normal means to be able to do this, that the New York average is $25.67 an hour for a two-bedroom place. Now, the national average which, of course, shows that New York's a little bit above the national average, is $19.35. And if that means it's a little bit over 40000 a year. Oh, Friedman. Oh, hello. Hold on one second here. Let me get you up here. Let me get you up. Let me get you up. Hey, Friedman, there. Hey, Friedman, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you now, yeah. I didn't I didn't notice you on there. How long were you there? Uh, no, just for, uh, about a minute or so. Okay, not bad. I mean, that's standard procedure for you, about a minute or so. It's perfect. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, yeah. Uh, glad to hear you back on the radio. Uh, had a, uh, a quick question about this whole um, the woman wanting the sex change for her husband. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, of course. All right. So he's willing to do anything... Uh, apparently for his wife, has he ever asked her to bring another girl into the relationship instead? And that way it's kind of a win-win for both of them because then he'd get two girls. That is a win-win for both of them in that sense. Now, here's what I'm thinking. Well, this is what I don't understand. The reason they don't want to get divorced is because of being married, you know, under, like, Catholic rule. Now, I would think getting your sex change would be a pretty significant issue in, uh, like, a, the, the rules of Catholicism. But in the same sense, wouldn't bringing another person in? Either way, I would assume that it's all, you know, negative for that sense. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's, uh, oh, well, I mean, I don't know how long you have to talk, but, I mean, uh, the last thing I got here is about Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, well, I'm actually, uh, I'm driving home from work now, so I've probably got about three or four minutes. Oh, perfect, perfect. I, uh, I probably only have about five or six minutes for the show total anyway, so, uh, what I did is, if you weren't listening in the beginning, what I said was I'm trying to do every week is, like, do, like, a little mini-series where I talk about a topic two weeks in a row, and this will be the first week I've got to talk about Caitlyn Jenner. I was planning on doing it last week, but I decided not to. I had other stuff to cover. You kind of listen to that show. It was basically about porn and sex and all that. Um, but, uh, but the first thing I had about Caitlyn Jenner, so obviously you've seen the Vanity Fair cover that says, call me Caitlyn and things like that and how she had 17 million people who tuned into that little television spectacular that she had. Wow. Now, being Bruce Jenner, winning an Olympic gold medal, being on the cover of Playgirl, being an author, being an actor, and yeah, I was on that awful Kardashian show, but still... Where in life do you get to a point to where this is where you go to? Like, I I get if – no, actually, I don't. I, 
nothing against it. I mean, I'm happy that she is finally happy. But, I mean, what do you think about that? Isn't that, don't you think it's a bit much? Uh, it, I mean, it, it depends. I, the only thing I can think of, and I've never been or never had that kind of fame and fortune before, but if if he was so popular back when he did everything that he did and was kind of getting out of the spotlight, you know, perhaps he missed all that attention and just wanting something crazy to do to kind of get back in that limelight. Yeah, no. This was, this, this was his way of doing it. And I still say him and he and, and all that because I, I don't know the full details of exchange operation, but, I mean, if they just I, – I think he's just a man with a mutilated penis, you know. Well, I don't, I, don't I, don't think the whole, whole, you know I don't think the whole operation's happened. I think there's been some breast augmentation and some things like that, but, it, it, but the, the full – the full transition, if you will, hasn't happened yet, to my knowledge. Like, the article doesn't say the full transition has happened, and I don't know enough about it to actually say that it has. But what he said was that the transition for him began in the 1980s, so shortly after the Olympics, so I think it was 76 or 72 or something like that. Um, and after that, when he would go do um, um, conferences and things like that, he began to wear pantyhose and, uh, and bras underneath his suits. And until he got divorced or went through the process of divorce from Chris Kardashian, he gave it up in fear of being looked at wrongly. So once that relationship ended, he decided to come back out with it. Uh, it's just it's beyond my reasoning. I have, I have no idea what goes through somebody's mind that, that wants to do somebody like that, but I guess to each its own, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess. I guess. Uh, and the last thing on that is uh, uh, that uh, she, and this would be Caitlyn Jenner talking, Caitlyn Jenner says Bruce Jenner lied about his life, and Caitlyn Jenner can actually be honest. Huh. So a little bit of a multiple personality thing going on, I think, here, too. Yeah, I, my, my favorite is actually the first picture I've seen, and I just absolutely loved it, it was the picture of Bruce, or whoever you want to call him now, is um, he was on the new cover of the new Mrs. Outfire movie. Is that is that serious or is that a joke? No, somebody had, had, had uh, photoshopped it and they took the cover of, like, DVD cover of Mrs. Outfire but put him in it instead. So it was just kind of like, ah, he wants to be a woman. Yeah, see, I could see that, though. I think that'd be actually a pretty entertaining movie. I think he wants to get, you know... Well, the thing is, is that what I'm going to talk about next week in part two of this is how um, becoming a transsexual and not being famous, that if you're not, if you don't have a lot of money, you're not a big name, things like that, what those people actually go through, because it's a lot more... Di this dude's getting his own reality show now. He's on the cover of magazines, things like that. But when you're not famous, there's a whole different ballgame. And that's what I'm going to talk about next week on that Bruce Jenner topic. Nice. So, yeah, right, well, so, uh, um, you got to get out of here. Up here. Yeah, i got to go and take care of my kids and stuff. So. All right, well, yeah, listen to the beginning of the show because I had a lot about kids. You know how we used to talk about how uh, kids are always left in cars and things like that? Well, we had a couple here in Florida, one in Trinity and one in Panama City. Oh, wow. Yeah, so listen, I'll, I'll end up getting the show posted probably tomorrow night on the YouTube channel. So. Yeah, definitely going to listen in. All right, perfect. All right, uh, you have a wonderful day. Thank you, you too. All right, see ya. All right, let's see. So uh, that's pretty much going to do it for our show this week. Uh, next week, uh, next week, hopefully, show calls in. He wants to text me the entire time. He's not even working today. Um, but, uh, oh, same as Bride. It's actually McBride's birthday today. Happy birthday, McBride. I think he is, uh, uh, I don't know, 34. Four-ish now, because I'll be 32 here in about a month. So um, hopefully I get to talk to him soon, have him call in. Again, we're going to be doing this every Monday from 3 to about 3.45, 3.50 or so. Um, there will be a couple days I'm going to miss. I think uh, one of them is going to be my birthday. I'm not 100% sure I will be here, but uh, um, I'll be working the morning before my birthday, which is a Monday, and I'm going to try to come in and do one on my birthday. And then not sure about the anniversary show for the uh, intern and I's anniversary 
Um, we're both requesting off work, so we can both maybe come in and do a full show together. But uh, that'd be nice. Show that show in the gap. That'd be a great show for you guys to call in. Um, so next week, we're going to be talking about the Caitlyn Jenner Part 2. Um, like I was talking with Friedman, uh, the, the, being, a, being a transsexual, not necessarily being famous in comparison to how Caitlyn Jenner is being portrayed. Everything's positive. For the most part, everything's seen in a good light. It, not, it doesn't work like that for everybody. And uh, also, we're going to talk about that Texas pool party that I haven't really got to pay a lot of attention to. Um, that's probably, of course, going to bring up stuff in relation to Ferguson Baltimore and New York and things like that, stuff that I don't necessarily want to get into, but I am going to talk about that Texas pool party to see if I can find and give you a little hint on what else. Um, some shark attacks, um, a rally man selling his mom or a stepmom or mother-in-law on Craigslist, uh, night terror. And we've talked about how the uh, e-cigarettes are really bad for you. Well, I got another little article about it. Uh, let's see. I think other than that, that's all we got for this show. Uh, looking forward to being back on next week. Uh, have a good day.